thank you very much, Ambassador Gautam. Uh, it's very good to see you again. And I also like to thank uh, Asian Confluence uh, for inviting me to speak at this very uh, important uh, discussions. And um, I would like to actually be a bit more uh, interactive with uh, what uh, other experts have already uh, discussed, and especially my senior colleague, Dr. Mutan, has uh, laid down a very uh, a good roadmap uh, for what uh, two countries can consider. So I would rather pick on uh, a few issues that uh, he hasn't uh, highlighted. Uh, perhaps i like to pick up what uh, Dr. Prabhi has already emphasized, that um, Myanmar has uh, uh, long borders with both India and China, and also Thailand. And on, on the side of China and Thailand, we do have a huge uh, border trade. Uh, it's it's uh, also going through the very vibrant and uh, uh, very active uh, border trade zones. And uh, to compare with the, what's happening in China, Myanmar, and, in China, and Thailand, Myanmar border, I think uh, uh, India, Myanmar border seems to be quite, uh, you know, as uh, what uh, Burby has, uh, you know, used a photo from the Nasha. It's it's a very dark uh, area. So let, let us uh, work together to make it uh, brighter and uh, more vibrant uh, from, from now onward. Uh, of course, I think that Dr. Mutan is uh, quite correct in saying it's uh, without the transport and uh, physical infrastructure, it would be very difficult for us to uh, see any uh, trade uh, between the two countries. But uh, perhaps uh, we, have to, we have to start from where we, where we have. Um, actually, uh, there are already some sort of uh, uh, cross-border trade, especially uh, most of the agriculture uh, goods have been flowing from Myanmar to India. Uh, so maybe perhaps this is something uh, which uh, uh, two uh, authorities can uh, enhance the border trade through the trade uh, facilitations. I think um, Dr. Onzawa has also mentioned about the, the trade facilitation as a, as a key uh, task for the two uh, governments to enhance uh, border trade between the two countries. Um, because I, I, I'm saying this mainly because, you know, uh, Prabhi has already mentioned that uh, from 2017 onwards, there was a sudden drop of uh, bilateral trade. Uh, as you all know, it was uh, caused by the government of India's, uh, you, know, uh, re uh, you know, issuing of the new regulatory uh, uh, quantitative restrictions on the passes uh, the, the lentils and legumes uh, from Myanmar to India, I, which uh, you know used to occupy about um, you know 800 to 1 billion uh, trade worth of uh, export from Myanmar to India. Now it uh, is uh, less than 300 uh, million US dollars. So uh, it, it's supposed to take up uh, pick up uh, some sort of a momentum, but uh, until unless the government of India can um, reconsider the uh, quantitative restrictions on the passage trade, uh, there is no way that uh, uh, our bilateral trade can actually pick up uh, any uh, momentum. So I would uh, like to use this opportunity to also appeal to the uh, Government of India authorities to reconsider about uh, um, about the uh, quantitative restrictions on the passage trade. I, I'm actually advocating for this uh, mainly because you know, in the light of what happened in COVID-19, uh, the countries are now forced to prepare to mitigate any sort of uh, supply chain disruptions. Um, and uh, as uh, Vanzer Gautam has just emphasized, that the uh, you know uh, be behind the trade there there must always be an uh, investment, and maybe perhaps uh, this is a time that the, the India must consider investing more in Myanmar, uh, mainly because I'm saying this because I 
in, in the recent years, India has been investing quite a bit of uh, agriculture plantations in, in uh, Africa and to grow some of the lentils and the pulses in the you know, Northeast uh, Africa just to exp uh, import some sort of uh, lentils that uh, India is in, in need of. Um, uh, in, in fact, most of these lentils, uh, pass us something like a pigeon peas and black grams are the things that Myanmar has been exporting to India for, for many years. So maybe uh, for the sake of uh, managing the supply chains, uh, which it's uh, much better to manage a shorter supply chain and that the supply chain that is uh, no barrier between the countries. And Myanmar actually uh, provides uh, the best location advantage for India investor to do any sort of agriculture investment so that they can actually uh, import uh, back to India. So maybe perhaps if you think of uh, agriculture value chains and linking between the two countries, perhaps through the land-based uh, cross-border uh, connectivity, maybe a very good solution um, in, in the wake of what's happening in the COVID-19 and also uh, in the light of uh, what the two countries can actually have a long-term um, um, uh, arrangement uh, for such trade. Um, I also wanted to touch on the, 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 the one uh, particular aspect of uh, the border trade. And then when I actually take a look at the what's going on at the uh, India Myanmar border, and then there was a one product that stands out very outstanding. And so we are actually exporting a lot of beetle nuts to India. And then uh, unfortunately, starting from the 2017, uh, we also saw that there was a restrictions on the beetle nut, and then there was a huge drop, uh, even though the beetle nuts only uh, is about the $20 million a trade. So maybe perhaps uh, if we can't tackle on the larger passes trade, why not we can start, uh, you know, uh, negotiating on how to make a stable beetle nut trade across the border. Maybe perhaps this is something that the trade officials from the both sides of the border can really take a look and then maybe try to find out the ways to uh, enhance it. So maybe I think these are the, some of the uh, practical projects that uh, maybe two governments can consider. Um, uh, to, to answer the ambassador question about the duty-free trade preferences scheme, DFTP, as far as I know, uh, we haven't realized a lot of benefits from it because uh, most of the products uh, are still in the exclusion list of uh, government of India. So maybe perhaps uh, if there's a chance that we should also look into it and then see how uh, investment-led uh, trade might be able to uh, address the issue. And um, so I think uh, my, my time is up, so I would just uh, leave it here. And then uh, I wanted to give it back to Ambassador Gautam for your intervention. Thank you very much, sir.